All right, sorry, I just got lost. Here we are. Uh, so we're talking now about the last one, the controller, the manipulation one. And, you know, this is, again, the standard approach that uh, Arrington's taking. So he goes in his paper, he's like, here's why, here's what it means for somebody to be um, controlled by someone else. And then, you know, he tries to say, oh, okay, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, these aren't the things that are going on in the case of power. Uh, persuasive advertising therefore advertisers don't control consumers and so because they don't intend to produce all of the necessary conditions for our purchases all right so and then crisp is going to respond in basically the usual way which is again if somebody gives you a definition you want to go you want to look really carefully at that and go wait was that the right definition for the thing that we care about i mean it's perfectly easy to make a consistent definition, but it might not be the thing that we actually were trying to capture. So that's what Crisp is doing again. And the argument is pretty similar to all the stuff we've seen before, so we can go pretty quickly. Um, what he's saying, remember over here, uh, when we were talking about the um, evil genius, and he was like, um, oh, it's not enough that we're able to you know, sort of come up with some justification for why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, that doesn't seem to capture all we care about when it comes to freedom and voluntariness. Um, he's going to say something similar here, but by just changing the example a little bit. So remember over here, we were saying, all right, we're going to stick some in electrodes in your brain and we're basically going to move your body around. And if we can cause there to be a disconnect between how your body's moving around and what you're thinking and trying to do, then there's a problem. All right. Well, here, Chris was going to use a similar example, but instead of um, using the, uh, putting the electrodes into the motor, motor cortex where we're basically just controlling how your body moves, um, instead what we're going to do is stick the, the electrodes into, you know, well, there's no part of your brain where we store desires, but suppose there is. Um, we're going to stick them into your parts of your brain. So we're going to kind of mess with how you see... Um, you know, what you see to be a reason for doing what, right? So he says, it's going to, um, we're going to, when we stick the, the, so when we want you to dance a jig, right, it's necessary that you have a more basic desire, save for power, which dancing a jig presumably in most contexts does not bring you more power um, as far as I'm aware. All right. So what we do is we go, uh, we, we activate the desire for power, right? And then the person starts dancing, but we also mess up their own kind of like insight into themselves. So they think when we ask them, hey, why are you dancing that, that jig? And they're like, I'm dancing because I like dancing, right? So they're, they're confused about why they're actually dancing. Um, and I hope this is starting to sound kind of familiar to you, right? What's going on? So they think they're dancing because they like dancing, but they're wrong. Because in reality, the desire to dance stems from a link between the, the dance and the fulfillment of their desire for power, uh, which is forged by the electrodes. So we kind of like short-circuited the desire for power and like, you know, jumpered it and connected it over to the desire to dance. So the person's totally confused about why they're acting. And that means... That's still going to be on this case, uh, on, on, on Arrington's definition of control, that's still going to count as the person not being controlled, right? Because, uh, let's see where it is. And bah, 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 bah. I'm sorry, I just missed where he drew the connection, but it's, hopefully it's pretty clear, right? That um, you are not going to count as controlled in this situation when they've got their, your practical reasoning all jumbled up by the electrodes, um, because it's, it's just like this, right? The, there's other stuff, you know, the advertiser is just giving you like the desire to buy the uh, product, but they're not driving you to the store and, you know, like making sure that you walk down the right aisle and pick up the right box and all of that stuff. So it's similar. It's the same sort of thing is supposed to be going on here. And again, we're just like, Oh, I don't really, you know, that the definition we're being given of control and manipulation just isn't capturing what we want it to do. Um, we still want to say that the person who's being 
according to Crisp, we still want to say that the person who's being manipulated is acting in a way that they are not in control of themselves. So what do we need to add to get a better account of the um, of uh, control and manipulation? If you guessed that it has something to do with acting for reasons which you can accept um, or reasons which, you know, you can agree with and all that stuff we've seen multiple times, you are right because you are a great and smart student, right? A more accounting account, a con sorry, a more convincing account of behavior control would be basically when we make somebody do something for reasons that they themselves cannot accept as good or justifiable, right? And that's basically, once again, the same kind of move that advertising or this kind of advertising is going to cause you to act in ways that uh, is divorced from the kinds of reasons that you can actually accept, right? You're going to go to Carl's Jr. because you want sex. We point that out to you and you're like, that makes no sense, but I still feel the need to do it. Um, and that looks like it's going to be problematic from the point of view of autonomy, right? So that's basically all that's going on. There's a few more bits and ins and all, you know, stuff that goes on here. Sorry. Um, but the last thing I want to say here is just to make sure it's clear where to draw a line, which is right. Oh, fortunately, there's a nice space. OK, so here, there's no sections heading here that he's about to change topics, but he is right there. He's changing topics to that second part. So remember, I said the overall uh, structure of the paper goes like this, right? Uh, persuasive advertising, uh, what it subverts uh, autonomy, right? Oops, sorry. Autonomy, uh, sub, you know, subverting autonomy. I always write in Japanese in my notes, so I uh, get confused, wrong, right? Remember, this is the overall argument of the paper. Therefore, so PA persuasive advertising is wrong. Okay, all we've been talking about so far, the sections, you know, A, B, C, and D, that's all this stuff. And right here, maybe I should, now we are transitioning to talk about that. So we're going to talk about that uh, with this paper from Nelson. Okay, that's all for now.